Well, it is a good Wednesday evening. It is 6.30, and this is Pastor Greg Hudson, Dunbar Church of the Nazarene. And today is Wednesday, March the 24th, 2021. And so I welcome you uh, to this service. And this is our first video live stream on this Facebook page, Dunbar Nazarene Church. So I'll wait just a couple moments to see, to give us time to get on on the video. We've got a few on the phone, but I'll wait for just a little bit to make sure we get some on the video. And again, it may take, hopefully everybody will follow over from Gregory Hudson back over to our church page. Uh, we've announced it and put it on uh, both Facebook pages, but we may not have everybody tonight till everybody gets used to come over to Dunbar Nazarene Church. But we're here, Dunbar Nazarene Church, and I just see uh, one so far joining in. So uh, we'll wait a minute to give a little more time. And again, it's our first night on this page. We may lose a little bit. Um, the followers until we get it all till everybody knows to come here so and there's a few more and if you are watching on Facebook if you wouldn't mind just to type in uh, your name and that you can see and hear okay to make sure again it's our first service on Dunbar Nazarene Church uh, and again we'll, we'll wait just a couple moments okay I see Jim uh, is, is watching and it's working so good and I see a few more uh, looks like a few more devices are logging on so what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and get started with some announcements and again we welcome those of you that are coming on on Facebook and also on our phones we have uh, David Evelyn Whitby and we have Lorraine Townsend and we also have uh, Othena Hopta and we have Karen and Margaret Slaymaker with us tonight as well so we're thankful to have them and I see uh, Beverly Johnson thank you for that that you can see and hear fine and Sarah is uh, watching and candy is there so we'll get started with some announcements and again if you notice tonight those of you that can on Facebook if you can see depending how your Facebook account is set up if you can see who's there and you recognize that some of our regulars are not just after the service tonight or maybe even text them during the service and say hey remember it's on Dunbar Nazarene Church now that we've got our, our page going because um, some people may be creatures of habit even though it's only been two months habit um, Cheryl turns okay thank you Cheryl you're there so um, for announcements and Bruce Swisher hello Bruce we're glad to see you and Hannah Tillis is with us a couple things talking about that with Facebook again we've got this page going it's our new one uh, many people have liked and followed it we're up to about 200 now but if you wouldn't mind um, go to your friend list when you when you go to this page Dunbar Nazarene Church it'll say you want to invite friends and if you're comfortable you can invite all your friends and then it's up to them if they choose to follow or not because some of them will be church friends and you want them to be there but if if you're not comfortable with that you can just go down your list and click on the ones that you may say hey this is a person who's a part of our church they may not have followed yet um, or uh, just a second I'm getting a text here from someone in the church as well give me just a second Okay, I see uh, uh, that's about church, but I'll come back to that in a moment, a text I just got. Sorry. Um, but if you don't mind, just uh, let them know. You can send an invite as your friend. And uh, and you know, that's how we got this started the first time. Several of us sent out to our friends. So make sure you like and follow, and that'll get us back up to speed. We're trying to put announcements and everything on this page again. As you saw yesterday, we have another video camera installed. We thank Bill Griffith for working with us on that and that puts us at eight cameras which is a full load for our system and hopefully it'll last several years for us now but that puts most all sides of the church building on video to help prevent some situations and you say situations it can be anything from people you know kind of hanging out or loitering to uh, vandalism because we've had all those so that's why we keep adding cameras and for an example uh, we hit a snag yesterday we were getting ready to install the carpet at uh, at church in the what will be the children's church room downstairs and we got all the hallways painted down there to get it looking good for everybody going downstairs and then we started with the kids room and we'll build out from that room by room as we open up and the guys peeled the carpet back yesterday and we found on the outside wall by 16th Street some moisture coming in from last week's rain it looked like it had not been long hasn't been much moisture 
um, just since the heavy rain started you know, here in March. Um, so we went outside to look and you know sometime in the last few months it appears that uh, um, some of the people who tend to hang out at times where we didn't have cameras have had smashed up one of our gutters and that heavy spring rain we started getting instead of going down the gutters it went all on the ground and soaked down into the wall so yeah, that's why we put the cameras up to try to help solve some of these problems um, and, and so we we're glad for that also Bill Griffith is helping us on that as well because uh, we had to get that fixed fast because there'll be more rain coming and it delayed our carpet we're hoping to get it next week because Easter Sunday is just around the corner and that's our goal is to have that room ready for Easter Sunday for the kids and so we're working on that as well to get the the downspouts repaired and the lines run out to the street to get the water away but uh, again there's many things going on here at church and we thank you for your support and your work in that um, uh, I see a note my phone keeps uh, blowing up because I uh, apologize on that but there's a note that there's going to be a drive-through a drive-through COVID vaccine clinic at the Civic Center on Saturday Doris uh, and Dick are going to be going to that and so if you want any more information on that you can contact uh, Doris that's coming through on some text but so we have those updates also the CEF Bazaar Saturday went well and the Lord blessed and they had a good uh, good turnout um, also our church bus we got an estimate on lettering for it so hopefully by next week we'll get it lettered our name on it which will help and be a blessing as we go around town so we uh, thank Greg for helping us on that also want to wish a uh, happy anniversary to Jim and Candy I uh, saw yesterday it was their anniversary so we're happy anniversary to Jim and Candy and uh, Candy or Jim I know I know it's over 50 but I lose track so if you want to type in how long it's been um, I see also my mom is there and John and Denye and Hannah uh, my Hannah so we're thankful for all of you watching but again happy anniversary to Jim and Candy Palm Sunday is this Sunday. It's hard to believe we're already there, but this Sunday is Palm Sunday, and the music for this Sunday, uh, Jim will be leading us in congregational songs, and we'll be having All Glory, Loud, and Honor, uh, and Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, a couple of songs that are uh, classics for Palm Sunday, and then Kathy offered, she'll be singing Oh, What a Price, talking about Christ going to the cross, because on Palm Sunday, the church generally does two things. It remembers the triumphal entry, but also it thinks about the crucifixion because we don't always have a Good Friday service. So um, we remember on this Sunday the triumphal entry and the crucifixion of Christ. And so that's this Sunday and our scripture reading is about the triumphal entry. And then I will be uh, preaching. That is um, from John chapter 12. And then I'll be preaching from um, Philippians. Let me look at my list here. I've been studying on it, but I've got so many papers laying out. Uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And a powerful powerful passage of scripture in fact today I was thinking there's no way that I'll be able to do justice to that passage uh, it is a passage of scripture let me reference it here for you that's so powerful it talks about what we call the kenosis passage meaning when Christ emptied himself it says that he emptied himself to come to earth he is very God a very God and that never changed but he restricted himself he emptied himself so he could come down to this earth and be human and not rely upon his divinity to get through, but instead his humanity, so he could be our sacrifice. And it goes through talking about how he made himself of nothing, he took on the appearance of a man, he humbled himself to death on a cross, so it's all the story of Holy Week and Good Friday. And then it tells us that because of this, God the Father is going to exalt Jesus to a name above every name, and at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and that every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we have a powerful passage about that but then what makes this even more powerful if it's proper grammar is that the very first sentence to this passage it says in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus colon and then it starts talking about how he emptied himself to die for us so it's telling us on top of this amazing story amazing message that Jesus gave up everything of heaven to take on the cross for you and I it says we are to do the same we're to have the same attitude that we empty ourselves of our pride and live a humble life to serve others and to tell them about Jesus we can't save them only Jesus does but we empty ourselves to tell people about salvation and to serve them in the name of Jesus so verse 5 is so challenging because it says in your relationships with one another have the same 
mindset. It's phrono in Greek, to think. In other words, to have the same thoughts as Jesus. To empty yourself and to humble yourself. To serve others. So powerful Scripture Sunday, and we'll have our music with that. And again, it is Palm Sundays. We're getting ready for uh, Easter. That begins our Holy Week. Then Thursday, next Wednesday, we won't have this video prayer service. Instead, we'll have Thursday video service, Monday, Thursday. And Lord willing, I'll do it like I did Ash Wednesday. Uh, Julie and I will read the scriptures and share the devotion from the sanctuary. And then we will take communion together. And so that is next Thursday at 6.30. It'll be the same time and everything. It's just Monday, Thursday instead of a Wednesday prayer service. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, April the 4th. First Sunday of the month, so it's already communion. We always do communion on Easter anyhow. And also we're hoping to have, uh, we're not hoping, we're going, Lord willing, we're going to have children's church during the sermon time. And the goal was to have that room done. If not, we'll do something else. But we will be working with the kids, and we're hoping to have the room done. So be spreading the word to have kids come. Uh, they just simply need to bring a mask or a, or a shield. We, we've learned that both are acceptable for kids. Uh, because they're not with the COVID, they're not the spreaders like normally they are with traditional flu. With COVID, it's the adults are the spreaders and, and um, 20 somethings on up, eight, 18 and type thing on up. So kids will just need a, a mask or a shield. And Julie and some others are volunteering to, to lead that. And they all um, are already working with kids at the school or have been fully vaccinated or both. So we're ready to get that started on Easter Sunday. But we've got to invite and get the kids back because it's been a year. It's been a year. It's been a long year. So we've got to work on that. So try to help us to invite and bring the kids back. And if somebody is conscious, let them know, one, we have been sticklers to abide by guidelines of what the CDC says. And we've seen now also that kids are back in school. And as long as those guidelines are followed, things go well. So just reassure parents that that's what we'll be doing. So uh, we want to jump in on... A couple devotional thoughts before we go to prayer and uh, yeah candy thank you you put there 54 years so uh, congratulations again to Jim and Candy Kathy Alford is with us we glad to see you Kathy and Julie and uh, Tonda and Bill and Betty we're glad to have you from uh, Florida and it's getting a little warm here also but I know it's always warm down in Florida so we're glad to have them two things on our devotion what we'll talk about in a moment is Psalm 1 and about ethics and virtue but just a thought before that, Sunday I mentioned that um, in the sermon about how we've gotten a little flabby spiritually with COVID sometimes, and we've gotten into bad habits, and I talked about uh, what I was trying to say. I don't know that I was as clear as I meant to be, but what I was trying to say is, much like a pastor of a church in Florida that I'm familiar with, his phrase is, if you are high risk and have health issues, not only we are blessing you stay at home, but please stay at home because we want you to be well. We don't want any problems. But if you are out working every day with other people and you're going to restaurants and, and you've been vaccinated, you're doing everything but church because you've just got used to being in pajamas on Sunday morning, then you need to get yourself up and get dressed and get back here uh, because it doesn't make sense that you're everywhere but church. So with that thought, Sarah Poe uh, posted a, a link to a video story from a lady in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you can go to Sarah's Facebook page, Sarah Poe, and link over to it. And thank you, Sarah, for putting it up. It's a little lady in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that her church has not reopened yet. It's still been closed. And she said as soon as it up because she feels confident about her health. So as soon as it does open, she'll be there. But what she's done, and this is an attitude that's wonderful for us, um, if you are one that does need to stay home, her attitude is, she said, you know, she realized at first if I don't, think serious about this, I'll get lax, I'll get lazy. So every Sunday, she gets up, even though she's watching online because her church is not opened. She gets up and she gets dressed with all of her Sunday best. And she's part of a, of a Af historically African-American church where their tradition is uh, to the, the big hats. And so what she did is for 52 Sundays, because we've just finished the year, every Sunday, she would get up and get dressed with her whole hat and everything and take a picture. And she had 52 different outfits. Now, I don't know how big her closet is, but she had 52 different outfits, 52 different hats. And every Sunday, she would have a different one on and take a picture and post. Not to brag about, she said she had to clarify because some people thought she was just, you know, about her clothes. She said, no, what my point is, 
if you can't go to church because your church is not open or if it is open you you're a high risk and need to stay home you still get up get dressed so that you stay in shape meaning that you know this is serious this is god's house it's it's his it's his day we worship together so that's a little thing a devotional thought to look at on sarah's facebook page to challenges but also i want to talk in psalm 1 about ethics and virtue we live in a society that is struggling with virtue and we justify everything out there c.s lewis years ago he wrote an essay it's entitled men without chest now a couple things the age this was written when he writes men it's mankind whereas today if we write men it's meaning specific men versus women but in english at the time of c.s lewis's writing he was an english professor but in his era when you would write men that was meaning mankind it was the common usage and when he's talking about without chest it's not a reference to and people today that read it think you're talking about males biological males and about you know must be talking about effeminate men men without chest and that's not at all what he meant in his period of english literature he's writing about mankind and chest meant your seat of virtue um, the the head in older english literature is meaning your logic and the stomach is meaning your emotions but the chest meant your virtue because in your chest resides your heart and we know the heart is merely a muscle but the heart is also synonymous with spirituality morality virtuous things so when he entitled the essay men without chest he was meaning mankind that has just let their integrity go and in that he talks about a culture he says there's a culture it's talking about a culture that fills the brain with facts and titillates the senses but does nothing to cultivate virtue and we'll quote him in just a moment but that's where we're at we're in a culture that people have degrees they have education but no ethics um, they can have certifications but you don't know how many of them have lied to get it and and they can earn their certification but then when you hire them they they just don't do well because they're not honest and i know in finances and accounting um, there's a school an evangelical christian school in south carolina that has some peculiar views and most of the financial institutions that recruited there were total pagans and would have nothing in common with that school and the school wasn't even always accredited uh, they were a great academic school but they chose not to accredit for a while and yet your biggest financial institutions would go there and they would recruit their business majors and their accounting majors and you say why and the schools would say or excuse me the businesses would say we're we're a secular company we don't care about your religious stuff and we know that you don't have accreditation but we know every person we've hired that graduated from your department not only knew how to do accounting but they were honest with the money because they realized we live in a culture that has men without chest mankind without virtue c.s lewis says in a sort of ghastly simplicity we remove the organ and demand the function he's saying we're in a culture that doesn't make sense it's like where we say virtue doesn't matter but we want virtue it's like if you took out the heart and still wanted it to work it's not going to work he said it's like we make men without chest again meaning humans without virtue and expect of them virtue and enterprise again it makes no sense we say your ethics don't matter um, and this goes two ways we saw this we've seen it in the past with uh, political leaders from one party and we saw it the last four years with the other party where people would say uh, it, it doesn't matter what he's done doesn't matter about the infidelity doesn't matter about the the cursing you know you know what I'm saying so we live in that culture where we say ethics don't count but we want ethics C.S. Lewis says we laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst <laughs> and he's right isn't he we laugh about the idea of we need to be moral and virtuous people but then we seem shocked when people are immoral and have no virtue and it goes to Psalm 1 well the first thing is first Timothy 1 5 uh, Paul says to Timothy the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart a clear conscience and genuine faith so Paul says our goal as Christians is to have a pure heart and a clear conscience in other words to be people with a chest be people with virtue and Psalm 1 tells us how to do this I'm using the New American Standard version for this it said blessed is the person and again since that's a newer translation it's 1977 that exact translation it's modern enough that it says person versus man 
Blessed is the person, meaning men and women, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. No, we'll go on, but the first thing we realize, if we want to have virtue, if we want to be a man or woman with a chest, with a heart, with morality and virtue, the first thing we do is we don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. We pray for the wicked, we witness to the wicked, but we don't hang out with the wicked. It means we are careful in who we choose as friends. We're careful in who we choose to be strong, close companions with. The next phrase in Psalm 1, it says, Nor do we stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Notice the progression. Walk, stand, sit. Each is a phase of getting closer. When you walk with somebody, that's one thing. Then when you stop and stand and talk with them, it's another thing. When you sit down with them, now you've made your final stage. It's almost like, and I've used this illustration before, it's like, and I think I borrowed it from somebody, but it's like when you go to buy a car. If you're like me, if you're going to look at a car the first time, now it's all changed. I, you look it up on the internet and you find out what you want and then you go buy it. But in the old days, you would go to the lot and look around. So what you would do, you'd always go to the lot in an evening or a Sunday when they were closed. Because why? As soon as you get out of the car, what would happen? There was a salesman on you, pressure you need to buy it. So you would go when nobody else is there and you look around. You would walk around and you would find what you might have an interest in. Then you go back the next day, if you're serious, when it's open and you walk up and again, there's a salesman and now the next phase is you stand and you talk to him about the car. But how the salesman know he's won, knows he's won is when you move from walking around when nobody's there to look at it to standing there talking about it, how he knows he's got you is when he gets you to do what? sit in the car because once you've sat in the car all of a sudden you smell that new car smell and it does something to the brain it just melts your brain <laughs> and you lose all your logic of money uh, you, you don't realize that you're getting ready to throw five thousand to seven thousand dollars away because it's new versus used and he says man you look good in that car and all of a sudden you begin to think i do look good in it you see the progression you walk you get a little closer when you stand and once you're seated in it he's got you funny story on that uh, mom and dad and mom's on here but they were looking at a car used cars a few years ago when they bought the toyota that hannah drives now and they test drove it and brought it to me and i looked at it and we agreed it's a good car and it has it's it's lasted for years now and they took it back and the salesman uh, got them out of the car and put them in a lexus and mom you remember this uh, they got you in a lexus and and next thing I know, my phone was ringing, and they were going across the, the Nitro St. Albans Bridge. It had just opened the new bridge, and all oh, the salesman knew that Dad would love a Lexus more than a Toyota. And so Mom called and said, we're driving this Lexus. What do you think? I said, take the car back and get out of it. <laughs> He's got you seated in the car. Get out and get back in the Toyota. Because I, I knew it was walk, stand, sit. And that's what we're learning here in Psalm 1. If we want to be a moral, virtuous person, we need to be careful. We want to witness to the wicked. We want to pray for the wicked. We want to care for the wicked and love them. But if we start hanging too close, we start to emulate them. So to be virtuous, we have to hang around not the wicked, but what? The virtuous. That's why in verse 2 in Psalm 1 it says, His delight, meaning the virtuous person, is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, meaning the Bible, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by streams of waters, which yields its free fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, in verse 4. But they are like chaff with the winds blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. And it goes on talking about it. So it's saying, if we are virtuous, we have to be careful about who we hang around with, who we think like, who we imitate, and who we emulate. But instead, hang around with people that are virtuous, moral, prayerful people. And there's the warning that the wicked will end up a mess. The other day, Monday, I picked Joyce up from school, and before she started softball practice, we run to Charleston. I had to pick up um, a, a suit from where it was getting alterations, and we got off the bridge and interstate there, and we're getting ready to turn left to go over on the west side and there was somebody whose life had been destroyed uh, by bad choices. And 
you know, the typical, you see it all over Charleston, people that are, that are bound in their addictions, and we need to pray for them and have compassion for them and try to help them. But we also need to teach our kids that bad choices lead to this. And as we're sitting there at the stoplight, I didn't say it in a negative way, you know, because some people will say, hey, you don't like these people, and, you know, and it's the kick them while they're down mentality. No, that's not Christian at all. So that wasn't the mentality. But I talked to her about, look, I said, what a sad situation. But that started with, years ago, a bad choice, and then a second bad choice, and a third bad choice. And as your choices get more, they get worse, and it leads down a, a, a bad rabbit hole, as they would say. So let's learn from Psalm 1 to live virtuous lives. Uh, we're about to, uh, where we need to pray on our timeline, but let's live virtue before our kids and live virtuous before our grandkids. Let's teach them how to live. Let's illustrate our kids uh, what virtue is like and what wickedness leads to. It means we have to be honest at our work. It means when we clock in, we work. <laughs> uh, we don't cheat the system. Uh, we don't steal. We don't cheat. Be honest with your family. It means to be to be honest with your family and be virtuous means you're also faithful to your family and honest with them. Let's go to prayer. I'm going to scroll down through here. I see um, Robert and the Quietegos and a couple others watching with us, so we welcome you as, as well. And if you have a prayer request, go ahead and type that in to the Facebook. I'm pointing to where I'm looking on my screen. Sorry about that. And But type in a prayer request, and I'll try to scroll down and, and find those. And we'll come to the phones in a few moments for a prayer from them. I have several here based on some text you all sent me or different conversations. So we'll start with that. Uh, one we want to pray for, Bill Hannon and his family. Um, as we know, Sunday we prayed for Bill and Denise in that um, their, their grandson, Tyler Smith, uh, age 24, uh, passed away and his funeral was Monday. Um, thank you for your prayers. Many of you prayed for me as I conducted that. Denise was able to be there. Bill, as we prayed, and we'll come to in a moment, had surgery Monday morning, so wasn't able to come. But thank you for your prayers, because those are always challenging, challenging funerals. Um, you know, I, I, you put yourself in that situation and think, how would I do as a parent if that was? You know, thinking about your child there. Uh, and even Patrick, the funeral director, afterwards, uh, he said, you know, you're right, you know, because he and I talked before the funeral about uh, the situation and, you know, how hard it is. And he said, I, as you preached, I was thinking as well, what if that was me because he's got four kids. And so those are difficult. So thank you for your prayers. And let's keep praying for Bill and Denise and William and his wife, Barbara, who's the, the mother of this young man, Tyler. Just a, a sad situation. So pray for that. But pray for Bill. As we put on our Facebook page, Bill had five tears repaired in his eye. We thank the Lord for medicine and the way it works, but let's pray for uh, Bill from uh, that the Lord would touch him and, and continue to heal his eye. So we pray for Bill Hannon today. Uh, I see a note there from Gary Jakes. Uh, thank you, Pastor Gary. And Gary's was our one of our pastors in West Virginia. Uh, I think you're in. I think Gary's in Tennessee now with grandkids. Um, also, we pray for Macy. Last Wednesday and Sunday, we prayed for Macy. Jim led prayer for her on Sunday. She is a middle school student, a sixth grader, and had extensive surgery on her face and, and mouth. Uh, last, well, it's about two weeks ago now, or a week and a half, time flies. And she was back in school today. Now, the mask helped because most likely she would not be back in school this early as far because of the scarring and the swelling. But the mask, you have to wear them all day at school, so it can cover it and allow her to get back in the swing of things. So pray for this girl, uh, Macy, just a 12 or 13 year old. And she has, um, she has suffered so much. Uh, again, we're on video and anybody in the world can watch and hear, so I'll be um, careful and discreet. But she, uh, Patrick and Nicole have, have just adopted her into their family, but she has experienced in things that you and I as adults have not and would not want to experience. So let's pray for her. Uh, some kids in our society just have a real struggle, so pray for her. Also, we're praying for the middle school as a whole and many students that are struggling with uh, some issues, and so we pray for that. Uh, let's stop and go to prayer, and then I'll come back. I see Julie's putting one up, and uh, Cheryl's putting one up. 
uh, on that and I have some more here so let's go to prayer for these and then we'll come back to some more on Facebook dear God we come to you we thank you for your blessings and Lord we thank you for being with Bill Hannon Monday any surgery on his eye and Lord we just thank you that you give doctors wisdom and help them to go in and make five repairs Lord we we just are amazed at it but we thank you for it be with Bill Lord as we know this is a a slow two weeks of mostly laying on his stomach and all the recovery that goes into it touch him if you would help it to heal be with Denise as she tries to help him and encourage him and take care of him as he's in this situation for a couple of weeks so Lord be with Bill and Lord we know Bruce Swisher is watching tonight and Bruce has been through this just in the last few months as well the same kind of surgery and knows the difficult recovery but Lord we thank you you brought Bruce through and we pray you do the same to Bill Lord, we pray tonight also for Bill and Denise's family. We pray for William and Barbara and uh, Barbara's daughter. Lord, we, we truly can't understand the suffering and the agony and the sorrow they're going through. Lord, just be with them. Help them. Thank you for helping me as I tried to guide the family through the process of Scripture and prayer and grieving. But be with them, Lord, as they're facing a tough battle of how to get over this loss of a 24-year-old young man so, Lord, we pray for Bill and Denise and William and Barbara and their family. Father, we pray also for uh, this girl, Macy, there at the middle school, and, and uh, they're living with Patrick and Nicole. If you would just bless Macy, thank you for helping in her surgery. Thank you for helping the, the swelling and things to go well. If you would help her, she's starting back in school. Lord, be with her as well as we know that sometimes in middle school at that age, other kids can be vicious if they see a scar or swelling. So, Lord, we pray for that also. And so, Lord, we just pray for her recovery. Lord, we pray for the middle school. We know there's so many kids there that are struggling in dysfunctional families and fatherless homes. And, God, the list is so long of the struggles there. And we know some have struggled so much academically. Some have good support systems. They just they are not good e-learners. And, Lord, we know others just don't have any support. So we pray for the kids at the middle school. Be with them. Be with Miss Siggers as the new principal. and Be with the, the vice principal, Mr. Rhodes. and Be with Miss Smith, the counselor. Lord, we know she loves her kids in that school. and We know that she's a, a, a Christ follower and prays for her kids in her school. And so, Lord, we just we pray for the middle school. And we ask all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's look here on uh, Facebook. Um, I'm looking at, okay, Cheryl, and she's got a request for some of her family members. So let's pray for, and I apologize if I look lost sometimes in the cameras. I'm trying over here to find it. But let's pray for Cheryl's family. Has some family members that are needing some a health touch. And then right below that on my screen, I'm not sure how it shows on yours, but on mine, the next one is uh, Julie. And she mentioned a, a friend of ours. Now, Matt Barnett, um, it is a, a very much a miracle. He had a wreck, one of these snowstorms we had. They live in Cincinnati, and whatever weather we get, Cincinnati gets 12 hours before. And in that, he was in um, on the icy roads, was in a terrible car wreck. We've seen the picture of it, uh, how he come out alive. It's a testament to technology and vehicles. And he did break his neck, but again, it was one of those, another miracle that not only he lived, but when he broke his neck, it was in a way that was... I want to be careful how I say this, but almost perfect. In that any other way that had been broke, it would have severed the spine and paralyzed him, but it broke in almost an exact perfect way. They were able to do surgery and repair it, but he's in a lot of pain. So if you would pray for Matt Barnett. Uh, they've been friends of ours for years. Mom, you remember them. And Matt is an excellent pianist. Um, it was funny. He was one of these kind of guys that was a natural piano. When he was a little kid, he could play anything those who've been around southern gospel remember the name anthony Berger. he could play like anthony Berger, and yet it was all by ear and he went to college and to get a degree in music and jim can attest to this and kathy both of them have music degrees you actually have to take piano theory and piano lessons and you have to be able to pass tests on how to write all the notes and everything and we would get tickled at him he was as far as the southern gospel genre uh, we had some classical pianists too but in the southern gospel genre without question the best pianist on the whole campus in the music division walking around with a, a third grade beginner music book because <laughs> he had to learn all that uh, but he's a wonderful talent for the Lord 
and he is recovering. So let's pray for uh, Matt Barnett. Uh, we see also um, a note from Pastor Kashimo. Uh, he and Pat got back from New Jersey and Pennsylvania late last night. It was really early this morning, but we'd say late last night. So we welcome them back and pray for them. As we mentioned last week, Pastor lost a cousin, and he shared with me today while they were gone, he also lost a nephew that passed away. So pray for the Kashimo. So we'll pray for these three, and then we'll come to our phones after that. So let's uh, look to the Lord for these prayers. Dear God, we come to you today, and we pray for Cheryl and her family. Lord, we thank you for bringing Cheryl and Gary and Jace and their family into our church uh, a year and a half, two years ago, whatever it was. We thank you for that blessing. And Lord, we just pray if you would be with their family. They have a few members that just need your touch. Lord, we know they're praying for their family, but Lord, we join with Cheryl. We join together asking you to intercede and to take care of whatever the health needs are. So Lord, we pray for Cheryl and her family. Just bless them. Lord, we pray for Jace as he's in school and help him as he learns and works through things. Just bless him. Lord, we pray for Matt Barnett. We thank you for the talent you gave him and how he's blessed so many churches over the years. Lord, we thank you for sparing his life. And we thank you for sparing even his mobility that he'll still be able to walk and to play the piano once he recuperates. And we know he's already started playing again just little bits, even though he's in such pain. So if you would touch him, Lord, just help with the pain. Give him relief from that and just continue to touch him. We thank you he was able to go back to church last Sunday, his first time to go back after the wreck. Uh, thank you for helping him to have that strength to get out and go again. So Lord, just bless Matt and Joy as she takes care of him. And Lord, we pray also for the Kashimos. We thank you for bringing them back safely from their trip. We thank you for allowing them to get to see the grandbaby in New York and New Jersey. And Lord, we thank you for being with them uh, in the funeral Saturday for a cousin. And Lord, be with Pastor and his family also as now they're dealing with the death of a nephew. So give them grace, give them strength, and just be with them. And Father, we just pray for these things. We join together as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, right now live, and we know some will watch later and pray as well. Lord, those prayers that are coming four hours, five hours from now, join them with ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll go to the phones. I have a few more written down, and we'll check um, We'll check on Facebook. Let's go over to the phones, and I'm going to just go by my screen order, and the first one I have here is David and Evelyn. And so we're going to check in, Dave and Evelyn, if you have a prayer request or a praise to share this evening. Uh, we have unspoken request. Just thank God for his safety and care through this time. It's an unspoken request for Dave and Evelyn and a praise for God's safety. Yes. So thank you, Dave. And I'm going to thank you. go down here to Lorraine. You're next on our list. Just checking if you had a prayer need or or praise tonight i have a praise my granddaughter survived a house fire her house was a total loss but she got out safely and only had to spend a few days in the hospital wow well thank the lord for that and that's uh that's definitely god's hand isn't it lorraine to survive a house fire well thank the lord for that yeah, so let's pray for her and just ask God to be with her. So thank you, Lorraine, for that, and we praise the Lord uh, for that miracle. So let's go now, just a second, and we'll switch now to Othina. Othina, just checking in with you. I have an unspoken request. Okay. I'm making a note here, so let's remember. That's it. Okay, we remember Othina's unspoken, and... And we, those of you on Facebook, we visit on conference call a little bit before service as well. So Athena and Lorraine are doing well. And uh, here with Margaret and Karen. Margaret or Karen, I'm just checking with you to see if you have any, any um, prayer requests or praise tonight. I think they're still with us. <laughs> so, Karen, can you hear me? Okay, well, apparently not, but... We'll pray for these, and then we'll come back to a few requests to wrap up. Um, and let's pray then for David and Evelyn had an unspoken and a praise for safety. And Lorraine had a praise. Again, just uh, God was so good to spare her granddaughter from a house fire. 
had to spend a couple of days in the hospital, but is out now. So we praise God for that. And Athena had an unspoken request. So let's pray. Dear God, we come to you again. And we thank you we can join together this way by phone, by Facebook. And Lord, we just pray now. We pray for Othena's unspoken request and David and Evelyn's unspoken. Father, if you would work in their lives, whatever the situations are, in their families or whatever it is, just, just touch, just answer prayer. And Father, we lift that up. And again, we say this, but we mean it from our hearts. We're so thankful that you know everything. When you know our needs and concerns, even when we're not at liberty to share them with everybody else, we can tell you. And so, Lord, be with Dave and Evelyn, be with Othena, and just help in these needs. Father, we give you praise also for safety in Dave and Evelyn's life as they share that. And Father, we thank you for being with Lorraine's granddaughter. Lord, we, we realize how fortunate she is and how blessed she is and how good you were to her. Thank you for sparing her life. Thank you for allowing her to be out of the hospital now. Just continue to bless and move in her life. But thank you for Lorraine's prayers that have been lifted up for this granddaughter. And again, thank you for sparing her. So Father, we bring these needs and praises to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's remember Sunday. Um, and here's someone from uh, Canada, uh, Randy. So thank you, Randy, for sharing that. And we'll pray for you in just a moment in our closing prayer uh, for their your week there in Canada, the Lord to give you guidance. And also we want to pray for Greg Wolf and Leanne Ward. Um, they both have had surgery in the last couple weeks or so and are I think Leanne has already started physical therapy, and Greg will be in about a week starting his therapy uh, from a shoulder, and Leanne's is a knee. So let's pray for these two, and they're uh, hoping to be back and worshiping with us in person. And so we, but they join with us on video when they're going through these times. So let's pray for Greg and Leanne, and also um, pray for Sunday. It's Palm Sunday, and again, we've already talked about that scripture. No way I can do it justice because it's so powerful, but let's just pray God helps us. As we sing, as Jim leads us in singing, as Kathy uh, sings for us, as um, Pastor Kishimo is going to read the, the Palm Sunday scripture, and as I try to preach, let's just pray God blesses us and moves in our midst. Also, if you would pray for me as I'm um, working through some things, or Julie and I as we're working through uh, decisions and praying about um, how, to, how to manage everything in our lives and, uh, and see what God has as far as some doors open or close. Um, separate from our church don't get don't get nervous about those things uh, but just pray for us and also pray for hannah as well as she's getting ready to graduate in just a few weeks and will be looking for housing and in, in huntington uh, so those are some things in our family if you would join with us in prayer let's close in this prayer father we come to you and we we pray for this uh, uh, person watching with us from canada lord they've asked for prayer for their week if you would guide them lead them and direct them and lord we're so thankful to know that wherever we are on this round globe that you are our god and you hear our prayers and you care about us and you answer prayer so lord be with uh, this person watching and worshiping with us in canada and lord we pray for greg and leanne as they're recovering from surgeries as leanne's in therapy and greg will be starting therapy if you would help them in their recovery lord bless them as they both uh, want to be back in in the pew and Lord, we pray if you would bless them as they're watching on video until that time. So Lord, be with Greg and Leanne. Father, we pray uh, also if you would be with us Sunday. Lord, help us as we worship you and celebrate your triumphal entry and start thinking about the cross coming up on Good Friday. Lord, just be with us as we sing. Bless Jim as he leads us and Kathy as she sings. Be with Pastor Kashimo as he reads the scripture. Let every part of it be moving to our midst. Lord, we give you praise for John and Denye as well. Lord, John's washing with us tonight, and he shared Sunday how you've blessed in his life. Thank you for helping John find housing. And Lord, be with his wife and kids as they're traveling in next week. Just bless them. So, Father, we thank you for that. If you would be with uh, Hannah as she's getting close to graduation in about 30 days, and be with her as then she'll start uh, the process of looking for housing for later in the summer in Huntington. Just guide her through that. And we pray for wisdom as well. And if you would be with Julie and myself as we pray about some things, Lord, we just pray for wisdom and guidance. Uh, Lord, we know COVID has brought many struggles and many decisions to, to many of our lives. And, and the change of, of 
structures of everything. So we just pray for that. Lord, be with us as we come to Sunday. Thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining with us. Those of you on conference call and Facebook. And again, um, th and there'll be some that will watch this later tonight or tomorrow. Those of you that do that, we welcome you as well. And please just pray with us and join with us. God is not constrained by our timelines. We will see you Sunday. Um, th I'll post this onto our YouTube page tonight. Sunday we'll be live streaming to YouTube and to this Facebook page. And now they're both named the same. They're both Dunbar Nazarene Church. So Sunday it'll be live streamed at 11 o'clock to Dunbar Nazarene Church Facebook, Dunbar Nazarene Church YouTube. And then we'll be in person as well and our conference call Sunday at 11. So the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, and again, thank you from local in Canada and Pastor Gary in, in Tennessee or Alabama. I think Tennessee or Alabama, just thank you and welcome and the Lord bless.